today I would like to introduce to you Jug's brand new short toss cage. This cage that is 35 feet by 12 by 12 gives every player the opportunity to work on drills that can improve their hitting. The beauty of this cage is its portability. It easily works in a backyard. It easily works adjacent down the sides of a baseball field to provide extra opportunities in practice to get necessary cuts and to work on hitting, especially hitting weaknesses, to turn them into strengths. This can be something that a parent is using in the backyard to develop the skills of their kid and create games that they can play in the backyard to make the game both fun and instructional. It can be used on weekends for the weekend player that's in tournaments. As they find out things they need to work on, they can go in their backyards and they can actually work on tee drills, toss drills, short toss drills, everything that it takes to be a good hitter, this cage provides the opportunity to get better. I've never quite seen anything that is this portable, this handy, and this inexpensive, that it puts top-notch training right in the backyards and the sides of any ba baseball field in the United States. One often overlooked hitting skill that's perfect to develop in the jug short cage is the ability to hit a fungo. And this is a backside fungo drill where the ball's thrown up by the backhand. The front side has to close. And what we can work on here is developing the hitter's ability to hit the ball anywhere he wants to and to improve solid contact and ball tracking one-on-one, -on -one, just the hitter doing it himself. The beauty of the jug short cage is we can have targets where the hitter gets a chance to work on hitting it up the middle, right center, left center, while standing here. The better he gets at this skill, the more easily transferable it is to hit in ever increasingly harder drill situations. So, I want you to just try to hit the center target. Center target. That. Center target. Center target. There you go. Center target. I want you to notice something. I didn't say a word. His eyes, his body figured out after missing right, 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 how to hit the center one. Now I want you to turn and try to hit the pull target. Again, five swings, no instruction whatsoever. The last three were going right at the target. Last, right center. Okay. Just the hair behind it. One more adjust. That last one, well hit, right over the target, five tries. As we're trying to develop the skill of hitting a fungo by throwing the ball up with the backhand and hitting it with both hands, if we don't work a little bit on just how to flip the ball up in the air properly, 
uh, we're getting the cart before the horse. It's, it's important if I want to pull it to throw it slightly in front of the plate. It's important if I'm going oppy to throw it slightly behind the front of the plate on the outside corner and that introduces the value of the jug's five, five point T because you're able to put down a home plate and actually put the ball where it should be hit on the inside corner that lets a lets the body free itself up and pull it. It shows very clearly how you got to let the ball travel a little bit further to hit the ball oppie so that you can hit the hit the ball with the barrel slightly behind the hands and then it shows you how in the middle of the plate you put it right on the front so you can get the barrel absolutely square and hit it up the middle until you actually can see the hitting plane you don't really understand it this T allows you to do that more importantly it helps you figure out how to flip the ball up on this drill so I want you to flip the ball up try to hit that ball not bad <laughs> flip the ball up and try to hit this ball all right near miss do it again third time's a charm all right we're good we we grazed it but the bottom line is this little bit of preliminary work with this tee it's just one of the ways that it shows a hitter where the ball has to be on the plate to be able to actually pull it, hit it up the middle, hit it oppie, and with that understanding comes better performance. The next thing we're going to do in the jug short cage, and again, this is perfect for this type of work, is, is your normal T drills that often are just hit into the side of a net. The beauty of 35 feet is that this gives us enough time to watch the ball travel to really get some good feedback and say was genuinely good contact really made. So there's some real advantages to being in this cage hitting at targets. We're always going to start hitting the ball up the middle and we should start with the jugs high tee. One of the beauties of this thing is it gives us a chance to go to the absolute top of the strike zone and it also gives us a chance, because we're using Jug's pearls, that we're not just going to try to hit the ball, we're going to try to hit the pea and pearl. And that's going to get us inside the ball. It's going to take care of a lot of flaws by just doing two things. Hit the pea and hit the target, and we'll have a good swing. So go ahead. Close. Pete. Okay. Okay. One easy adjustment. We've got feedback here because the balls travel far enough. If it's low, are you hitting too high or too low on the ball? Too high. A little too high, so you're hitting the top of the P. Hit the middle bottom of the P, it'll adjust itself. Nice. Okay, now we move on the hitting plane to the inside corner. All we got to do is we don't move our body, we just move the T out front on the hitting plane. Now I want you to hit the E, A, and R all three at the same time. Dead pull it to the target. A little more of the R. Gonna go up. Here farther out front. E A and R. Bingo. Now I want you to try something. Try to hit it to the left of your target. To the left of your target. Miss left. Close. 
little more of the R, okay? Okay, we are getting great results. He is literally almost hitting the target and they are absolute flat line drives. The more we do this, the more we're going to be able to get a feel for what it takes to hit the ball where it's pitched. We're going to be doing stuff that people in the Dominican Republic are doing all the time. And we can do it in our own backyards and they're getting real good results. We can do it here. Now, hit the P hit the right center target. Okay, I want you to try something. See the target without a ball. Just take the swing that ticks the top of this tee that would hit that target, that would actually hit it. That have a chance? Maybe. That's the swing you want to take right now. Not bad. Close. We might be a little too deep. We move a little farther ahead. Hit the P in Pearl. Hit the target. Nice. Close. The more we are looking at hitting targets, this is just the first time this hitter's ever done this, the more he does it, you can imagine being in your backyard doing your hitting drills. Then we go back and we move it to middle of the zone. We start at the top, go middle, go middle, left, right. Then we go to the short tee. We go below the kneecap, just to the bottom of the zone middle, pull, right, and we do it every day. Doesn't take very long to do this progression every day in the jug short cage. The jug toss machine gives an opportunity for hitters to, to do the normal side toss that we've been doing for decades, but the beauty of the jug short toss machine and our targets is this. We're going to be using the machine normally, but I'm going to be directing the hitter to try to hit targets. I don't want him to just pound it. Oh, well, you know, you pounded 20. That's, you know, that means we're working towards our 150 or 200 cuts. I want every single cut to have a purpose. And this cage, again, because we're letting the ball travel farther than just doing it against the side of a net, we're taking real hard balls, getting real baseball contact, and we're making the ball go 35 feet. If you don't really square the ball up, we're going to know. So we're going to turn the, the machine on, and we're going to start by trying to hit the middle target. As soon as we're getting good at that, we're going to switch it around. So middle target. Nice. Do it again. Good. Pull it now. Just, just hit the ball up front a little more and pull it. Good. Try to hit that pull target. Nice. Now go Oppie. Right center. Pull the last one. Okay. This isn't just side toss. That took about 45 seconds. And every one of those swings was actually working on the eyes and the hands, controlling the barrel and manipulating where contact is so that we're learning how to hit the ball where it's pitched using one of the jugs toss machines.
Another great use of the toss machine in the jug short cage is moving the position of the toss machine from what's always done throwing it from the outside in to actually throwing it inside out. This is going to give the hitter the challenge of hitting a ball coming from behind him across to the outside corner. So the cut fastball, the the curveball that's going, you know, inside out. This actually gives a chance to work on what your hands and eyes have to do to hit that pitch. And it starts with being able to hit it up the middle. So turn the machine on and we're going to start trying to hit the middle target on a ball going inside out. Good. Nice. Now go right center. Stop it right there if you would. What you're seeing is this. This is not easy. And most hitters cannot wait on a ball breaking inside out long enough so they go out in front and hook it. They get the classic roll over six to three. But with just six reps aiming at targets, by the end there, three of the last four are absolute line drives middle oppie. And those adjustments are going to happen if you've got the facility, this net, and if you've got the machines and the targets and you're trying to do the right things. The Jugs short toss cage was made for the light flight machine. This is exactly the distance that you want to use this machine. Every advantage of it, it you can take advantage of in this 35 foot cage. We can throw fastballs and go target practicing. Please notice this. To hit a target, if you're low on the ball, you're going to miss it high. If you're high on the ball, you're going to miss it low. To hit a target, it's a perfect square up. When we're in this cage, we're working on squaring it up every single swing. We've done that with backside toss. We've done it with tees. We've done it with the short toss machines. Now we're going to do it with light flight machines. This is fastballs. Try to hit the target right behind me. Please notice the jug's protective screen is perfect. Even these you don't want to have hit you. Safety's good. Good. Pull it. Take a swing that hits that. Okay. Go for it. It's a pretty good job that ball went away. Excellent. One thing you're going to see here, we got a little wind. Great. These balls are moving. Perfect. If you want to try to hit a ball that doesn't move, play golf. If you want to try to be a good baseball hitter, get a bunch of ball movement and still try to hit the ball where it's pitched. And right there, I said try to pull it, but it ended up moving to the outside half of the plate and his reaction was hit this one. How are you going to get that good unless you're in here doing this all the time with the right equipment?
Whenever we have the light flight machine in the short toss cage, we want to take advantage of one of the best features of this machine. The ability to throw right and left handed curveballs, right and left handed sliders. I spent my whole career and never saw a good breaking ball in practice as a player. I tried to, I guess, figure it out um, in games. Now, we can get 10, 15 curveballs every single day practicing in the short toss cage with this machine. And we can work on hitting them to targets. Uh, a lost start is if you, the first thing you want to do with breaking balls is just bunt them. Go ahead and bunt first. Good. Now third. Good. If you notice, the ball has to be struck in the middle of the bat for a good bunt, and the bat angle has to be exactly the, where it should be to hit the ball opposite way when you're going to first as a right-hander, and pull the ball when you're bunting at the third. Now you're working on contact, you're tracking, you're getting used to the breaking ball. One more bunt. I hit a couple up the middle. Try to hit this net right in front of me. With practice, we will make consistent contact, recognize curveballs better, because we're working on it purposefully every day. The last and kind of ultimate drill we do in the jug short toss cage is to throw batting practice. And even at the major league level, you don't throw from 60 feet 6 inches. You move up about 8 feet. Well, at the high school level, if you want to be able to actually throw strikes and change speeds and not waste time throwing 75% balls, the closer you are, the more you can be as old as I am and still throwing strikes and giving hitters a chance to do the ultimate only thing that matters in baseball. See the ball out of the hand, recognize if it's a strike or a ball, recognize if it's high zone, low zone, inner third, outer third, recognize if it's a change of speed so my, I have to hold my swing before I hit an off-speed pitch so I'm not out too far. Ultimately, this is where we get to work on putting into practice all the drills we've done up to this point and put it into a perfectly game-like situation. So to start, I'm going to throw fastballs only. We're sitting dead red. I'm going to throw fastballs only and I want you to hit the fastball where it's pitched. Inside, there's your target. Outside, there's your target. Middle third, there's your target. Take a pitch that's not good to hit. It's a 0-0 count. You're looking for your pitch. Double or nothing. Good take. Okay, so we're hitting, but we're not just hitting anything. We're hitting balls, OO count, that we can drive. We're trying to hit them where they're pitched. Now we're going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to throw either a fastball or a changeup. I want you to take the changeup and only hit fastballs. Okay?
Okay, now we're going to switch it up. Hit the change up, take the fastball, you're looking off speed. Good take. Good. Now I'm going to throw some breaking balls. I want to just track the breaking ball right now. Just track it. Hit it if you like it. Less than two strikes, you're comfortable with it. Good take. Real important skill for young hitters, don't swing at off speed pitches. You haven't developed the ability to stay back, so take them. 70% of the time they're balls anyway. Why swing and just expose a weakness? Last, two strike hitter. I want you to expect the ball away because most of the time in games when I have an advantage, I'm working on the outside part of the plate because most good hitters struggle there as opposed to inside. I'm going to expect away, adjust in, and swing at anything close. Choke up just a hair, and if it's close, just spoil it. Stay alive, build up the pitch count. Okay, it's far enough out. Okay, now here's a little wrinkle on this. It's a two strike hitting drill. I want you to swing at anything I throw. If it bounces, hit it. Just hit everything. Not bad. Why do hitters swing and miss so much? They don't work on hitting everything. So every part of the challenge of hitting can be worked on in this cage with hard balls in a game-like situation. And it can happen in your backyard or off to the side in practice. So you're quadrupling your intentional good practice swings every time you practice as a team, as well as working in your backyard. As good as this low T and high T are, if I stand here and take a terrible hack 30 times and think that those reps are making me better, I'm making a mistake. We want to have targeted practices where what we're asking players to do actually develops a better swing. Toss machines like this one right here are fantastic, but if I'm taking really bad cuts while I'm doing this, if they're not intentional, if they're not purposeful, it's not going to help. This machine right here is going to be able to throw fastballs, curveballs, change-ups, sliders from both the left and right side. This is a fantastic aid, but if I don't know how to pick the ball up and hit it, I'm just failing and failing and failing. So what we want to do when we're working on this cage, and we want to take advantage of the whole opportunity. The brand new Jugs short toss cage is going to allow us to have some T drills on one side, some toss drills on another, and live arm or machine hitting inside the cage. So instead of the traditional everybody standing around watching one person hit, we can have while there's batting practice going on the side, right at home plate, on the side we can be using the Jugs cage to get at least. 300, 400 percent more purposeful swings every single practice and every pregame.